Last season, the Cleveland Gladiators went 17-1 and found every way imaginable to beat the Philadelphia Soul. Four times Philly tried to knock off the Gladiators, and four times it failed, the last of which came in this very round of the playoffs. The Soul, who finished in American Conference Best 15-3 in 2015, will look to get some revenge for last year's early exit from the postseason when they host the 8-10 Gladiators at 5 p.m. Eastern this Saturday on the CBS Sports Network. Many projected the Soul to take a few steps backwards this year when they traded Derrick Ross and let Tiger Jones walk away in free agency. Yes, there were a lot of touchdowns and yards that ultimately ended up in Jacksonville, but the Sharks seemed no better off for it, while the Soul improved by six wins from last season. Dan Rodabaugh will certainly win either the MVP or the Offensive Player of the Year award this year, as his numbers were second to none for quarterbacks in the AFL. His 119 touchdown passes were easily a career high and league best, and the fact that he only threw 12 picks against that was amazing. Marco Thomas averaged over 100 receiving yards per game in which he played, ending the year at 1,772 yards and 40 touchdowns. Ryan McDaniel was second best on the team with 1,277 yards and 29 scores. The Philadelphia offensive line, anchored by a quiet free agent acquisition from last offseason Shannon Breen, allowed just a total of 10 sacks. Still, the defense was every bit as impressive as the offense for Philadelphia. The team forced 37 turnovers and had solid contributions from the defensive line as well as the secondary. With Bo Bell healthy, Brian Robinson coming off of a fantastic year, and Teddy Jennings amassing six sacks in just six games played, the sole front four could be the best in these playoffs. Cleveland has its work cut out for it for sure. The team is just 1-5 in its last six games, and it hasn't beaten a team with a winning record since knocking off Orlando back on May 2nd. That win at the Amway Center was the team's only victory over a team above 500 this season. Shane Austin might have thrown for 101 touchdowns this year, but no one is going to confuse him for the all-arena performer from last year. Austin's quarterback rating is down to just 107.4 in spite of the fact that he had three wide receivers rack up at least 1,100 receiving yards. Injuries have really cost the Gladiators this year as well. Tim Cheatwood hasn't played in two months. Anthony DeGreat sat out the last two games of the regular season. Fred Shaw and Terrence Sanders were supposed to solidify the defensive backfield, but they never panned out. Now, one of the best offensive linemen in the game, Kid O'Brien, is getting his shot in the NFL with the Indianapolis Colts, making him unavailable for the playoffs. One plus for the Glads is the return of Mario Norman, who returns for Cleveland's playoff push almost one year to the day that he was plucked by the NFL's Baltimore Ravens. Cleveland has actually only played two road playoff games in its history, the second of which was a loss here in Philadelphia in the National Conference Championship game in 2008. The Gladiators are just 4-3 and all-time in the playoffs. Philadelphia is 9-5 and in the second season, but it hasn't won a game since the conference finals in 2013 against Jacksonville. The Soul have actually never lost a home playoff game, going a perfect 6-0. and The odds makers have tabbed Philly at minus 14. The total is one of the higher of the weekend at 110, a number which doesn't seem unreasonable considering the fact that the first two games this season between these two featured 111 and 128 total points. The Soul won those two games by 15 and 16 points respectively before winning by 15 in the regular season finale last weekend with nothing to play for on either side. If the Gladiators pull off the massive upset, they'll head down to the Sunshine State next week for a game against either Jacksonville or Orlando. If the Soul do, do what is expected of them, they'll host the Sharks or the Predators next week in the American Conference Championship game. For ArenaFan.com, I'm Adam Markowitz.